I'm here now with Aaron Dworkin and Gareth Johnson, uh, both of uh, the Sphinx organization. Aaron is the founder of Sphinx. Uh, Gareth was the Sphinx laureate in 2010. Yes, Welcome yes. To, to Henry Ford and Great the, to be the here. celebration of Rosen Park. Thank you. Uh, I want to start with you, Gareth, because you're about to do something really pretty special here. Uh, you are going to play uh, Stradivarius from, remind me what year, 1709? 1709, <laughs> the golden age of the Stradivarius violins. That's amazing. Violins. That yes. is amazing. And, and, and so tell me about that. When you're, uh, when you're an accomplished violinist, what's it like to play something with that kind of history behind well, it? Well, for me, this is an absolutely incredible and unbelievable experience mainly for a special reason. Um, actually, my violin, which is, was made by Jean-Baptiste Villon uh -huh. in 1840, the best violin maker in French history, okay. he copied this exact violin, which is the oh, Siberian is right? Stradivarius. Okay. So whenever I go and pick it up, it feels exactly it feels like the same. mine. So right. Sort of familiar. Right. So it's right. very exciting to hear a new tone, a better tone uh -huh. than mine, more responsive and just overall one of the best violins ever made. Right, right. And so now what are you going to be playing? I'm going to be playing some show pieces. Uh -huh. One piece by myself that I compose. Oh, is that right? I'll Excellent. also play a little Bach uh -huh. and also a little bit of the red violin by Jean Carigliano. Okay, okay. Yes. Uh, Aaron, this has got just got to be, uh, for you, uh, the, the the pinnacle, right? This is what Sphinx is all about. Oh, uh, absolutely. Guys like Gareth, right? Absolutely. <laughs> and... The idea of being able to be part of a celebration uh, of the legacy of <laughs> Rosa Parks uh, and to be able to, you know, have such an amazing artist like Gareth bring that to light and share his art with people through such an unbelievable instrument. Yes, right. Uh, right. That is just one of the many treasures here at the Henry Ford. Is right. just it's, right. it's an incredible we opportunity. We should mention that that the us. Stradivarius is part of the. The Henry Ford the collection. Henry Ford collection, yeah. yes. Which is why you're playing it today. Absolutely. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Uh, tell me how you guys came to be involved in this uh, celebration. How did the uh, Sphinx fit into this? Uh, well, we have a great partnership with the Henry Ford. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just wonderful and obviously one of our key cultural treasures uh, in Southeast Michigan. Um, and But one of the ways that we've been able to do that is that they not only have these amazing instruments, not just one Strad, but right. several. <laughs> but, several. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but instead of just keeping them in the museum, they want people to be able to experience them. Right. And right. so we've been able to partner, and Gareth's been able to perform on the Strad already. Yes. Uh, and wow. so that's been just a tremendous opportunity for him and for the audiences sure. who've been able to enjoy his music through such an instrument. Right. Uh, so now you're playing an instrument like that. Does it have a different voice uh, it, it really because does. of the age it or because of the craftsmanship? Absolutely. I, I almost thought this violin sounded like a person the Is first right? time I played it. It had so much personality and character in uh -huh. the sound as opposed to other generic violins. Right. They just sound like violins. Right. Whenever you pick up the Siberian Stradivarius, you say... I see why this has a I name. I see why this is uh, a <laughs> why it has really a name. Yes. So even I mean you can tell the difference between that one and the norm oh the one yes. you play which a is also a rare absolutely. a rare instrument right. There's a big difference. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, t uh, tell me uh, what they they've called this a national day of courage in honor of uh, Rosa Parks. Uh, seems to me courage uh, for you was starting an organization like Sphinx, right? Um, well, you know, it's certainly, I guess in some ways, uh, is for me it was easy because it was just something that I had experienced growing up uh, and as a violinist and often being the only one of color. Right. Uh, well and that's thinking yeah. about that experience. And so for me it was really that drive. Uh, I think the, the courage really lies with all of our, you know, laureates and, uh, young and alums and, and fr starting right off the bat at the competition itself yeah. where <laughs> right. when it takes courage to get up there. And one of the things that we do is we really try to foster an environment where many of the competitors talk about how it feels more like a, a summer camp. Uh, where it's right. that type uh, of camaraderie, then I'm just going to compete and beat this other person. Um, and so many of our alums have become friends, collaborate long after the competition on various artistic projects, and even just personally and become friends and 
We've even had two of our alums who've gone on and gotten married. So. Is that right? <laughs> wow. And, and this, is, uh, this is competition season. The competition is about to kick off for Sphinx yes. uh, this year, right? Yes. So we're really excited. On Sunday, February 17th at 2 p.m. at Orchestra Hall mm -hmm. will be the finals concert. Okay. Uh, so we're very excited about that. We'll have the top three laureates competing for their final placement from the senior division. Uh, and then also from February 15th through the 17th, we'll have Sphinx Khan. Right. which we're very right. excited about. Right. This the, first, uh, the first one, right? The very first time there has ever been this type of national convening specifically on diversity in the performing arts. Right. So right. we definitely, everyone can check it out on sphinxcon.org uh, and or get tickets through our website at sphinxmusic.org or on the DSO's website. Yeah. So, so Gareth, tell me, uh, as, a, as a kid growing up, what was it about the violin uh, that inspired you? And what was it about classical music, which is not, you know, among kids of any background, uh, it seems like well that's a pretty tough sell, right? You, you know, with, with violin, I, I just grew up practicing. I enjoyed it. It was almost like a video game to okay. me. <laughs> but what really got me into the business and learning learning how the whole music business works is going to the Sphinx competition is that right? okay. and meeting others like myself it was a very unique experience, yeah. if you can imagine. And people like Aaron Dworkin and Rosa Parks, sure. I, they, they create change in so many people's lives because that basically set me up a life where I had a network to work from. Right. And it, it just created so many opportunities for me that it changed my whole life. And from that point on, it pretty much, that was the way I was going to go. Sure. Classical sure. music. And playing the violin. Uh, so now, when you were a kid, were you the only one that you knew who uh, was playing I was the only one in my area, in my whole area. Yeah. Yes, I just happened to hear Itzhak Perlman play a concert with the St. Louis Symphony at uh -huh. ten years old. Told my dad, I, I can do that. <laughs> my dad was like, "Quiet, well, you don't know what you're, you're talking about." And I was, like, well, I think I can do it. So I saved my own money, bought a little violin from a pawn shop. Is that right? Yes. Wow. Yes. Wow. So uh, you, you have some other performers here uh, tonight, correct, uh, as well? You guys are having other performances here tonight. The I believe I'm the only the one. You're yeah, the only yeah, performer. Yeah, I, I think Gareth, so. Yes, so, yeah, yeah, so, so you're just here as in support. And plus, yeah, well Gareth's uh, performing. You don't, need any <laughs> <laughs> you don't need anybody else? I'm right. not sure people uh, yeah. could, you know, even tell you. It's just going <laughs> to <No, it's gonna laughs> freak people to such a height. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Like I'm going to talk just a little bit about some of the programs of Sphinx, some right. of our history, talk a little bit about why this issue of diversity in the performing arts and especially in classical music is so important uh, and then really just uh, turn it over to, to Gareth to, yeah. to just move to wow people. everyone with uh, yeah. this this violin that has a voice I can't wait to hear oh yes <laughs> it's wait amazing to hear that. Yeah. you will love it wow. yeah well great to have you guys here great to have you a part of this celebration oh. uh, real pleasure and good Thank luck you. tonight yeah. we are honored to be a part of it yeah absolutely you're watching live coverage of uh, the National Day of Courage, a celebration of the 100th anniversary of Rosa Parks' birth. We're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be right back. <laughs> 